Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of r slash Tales from Tech Support, where we get to have a little chuckle at the technologically disadvantaged. I'm Uncle Reddit, and have I got a story for you. And I know you're going to miss this ugly mug tonight, guys, but I was having some camera issues and I'm feeling a little under the weather, so we're just going to go cameraless tonight and just stick with the text. On to the first story. It doesn't turn on. Well, it doesn't even have a hard drive. Some hours ago, I was ending a workday in my client's house. When all was done, my client's aunt told me to take a look at her two laptops because it wasn't giving any life signal. Well, I started with the classic, just turn the button on and wait. Nothing. Me. Well, I'll take a look inside. I take the lid off. Hmm. Here's your problem. Client. What? I don't see anything. Me. Exactly. You don't have a hard drive or a RAM module. It couldn't work without it. In that moment, my client went to call her aunt because a distant family had the laptop before and was the only suspect. I heard the family talking after that. The guy will leave the house next month. He betrayed them and stole from them just for a few bucks. So yes, I caused the expulsion of a guy from his house. That's good, man. The thief doesn't deserve any uh, leeway in that instance. And for our next story, I can't even call my doctor. Customer called in today complaining that they're completely unable to make phone calls and our service is absolutely horrendous and it needed to be fixed right away. He said he was needing to call his doctor right away and no matter what he did, the call wouldn't go through. I asked him before asking anything else if he could make or receive calls from any other number. He assured me that he couldn't, that he was using his brother's phone to call me, and it was the dumbest question he ever heard. He spent an hour yelling and complaining. Finally, he said that he had to deal with my stupidity all while his town was being rebuilt. I probed into what he could have meant by that. It turned out a bad storm hit his town, causing a tree to fall, you guessed it, into his doctor's office. I said I was going to test call his phone to see if my call would go through. He said, you can't, I'm using that phone to talk to you. I asked, well, I thought you were using your brother's phone. I never said that. He did say that, three or four times. I guess he just assumed the doctor's office was going to set a tarp over the damage and take his urgent call. I googled his town later, looked at the news. The doctor he urgently needed to contact was the town dentist. Well, you know what they say, OP. Common sense ain't so common. And for our next story, the top of the modem has been stolen. I used to work tech support for a British ISP. One day, I got a call from a panicked customer who told me that someone stole the top half of our modem. Now, English is my second language, and even though I'm fairly confident in my English, my first thought was that the lady was using some sort of slang. It was years ago, so it might not be verbatim, but the conversation went something like this. Me. What do you mean someone stole the top of your modem? Old lady. I mean, my modem was fine when I left the house, and when I came back, the top of the modem was gone. Me. Do you see any wires coming out of the modem? Old lady. No, the top half is just missing. Me. This is verbatim. Ma'am, I don't understand. The modem doesn't have a top or bottom half. It's one solid box. Someone would have to have broken into your house, saw the modem in half, and take the top part, but leave everything else in the house? Old lady. I don't know. Now I was thinking, maybe she's thinking about something else? Me. Ma'am, can you go to your computer and try to go to any website? Old lady. Is BBC okay? That's the British Broadcasting Corporation. Me. Sure. Old lady. Yes, I'm on their page now. Me. Okay, that means you still have internet. Can you go to the modem and see if there's any lights on? Old lady. Yes, give me a minute. Old lady. Oh, it got knocked over. Click. Yeah, the old lady couldn't see the top of the modem and immediately assumed someone stole it, even though it just fell over on its backside. Okay, guys. That's, that's a new one for me. I mean, hey, there's been days I've come home, parked my car somewhere a little different on the street, 
wake up the next morning, look out the window just to see the weather, notice my car is not where I thought it should be and thought it got stolen, but before I called the cops, you know what I did? I went and I looked. And for our next story, the pound sign. I had a ticket come through yesterday to help a gentleman having issues with his email on his iPhone. We recently migrated to a new exchange server, so calls for email issues were plentiful. Me. Good afternoon, sir. I heard you were having email issues on your phone. Do you have time for me to help you? Sir. Yes, yes. Give me a minute to pull over. Don't go too fast. I'm an old man and don't do technology well. I knew this was going to be an exciting call. I began walking him through to delete old account and set up new exchange server account. I told him to put in his email and then give him his new password, XYZ pound ABC. Not the actual password, but in this format. He tells me he keeps saying password is invalid. After three attempts, I told him to give me a moment and check that I had the right password, even though I knew it was right. I gave him the password again, and again set it out phonetically so there was no confusion. XYZ pound ABC. X-Ray, Yankee, Zulu, Pound Sign, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie. I told him to repeat it back to me as he typed it. Invalid password again. I'm now thinking I'm going to be really ticked if I have to drive to his office to fix his phone. I used the pound sign instead of hashtag thinking he wouldn't know what a hashtag was. I asked him, sir, are you typing pound, hitting the pound key? or selecting the pound symbol? He says, yes, I'm bringing up the phone and hitting the pound sign and then go back and continue to type my password. No, sir, you need to hit the one, two, three button, then the up arrow, then the pound sign on the keyboard. Sir, it worked that time and brought me into my email. Me, outstanding, it should take a few minutes for your new emails to start coming through. Call me with any more issues if you have them. Next migration, we won't make that special character a pound sign or a hashtag, but maybe an ampersand? I'm pretty sure my computer illiterate dad knew what a pound sign was even back then. And for our next story, never trust your client. Ever. I've been working for a near three years at a call center providing IT support, so I'm still quite fairly new, but I learn quick. During the beginning, we go over a lot of training over some of the software we use major and minor troubleshooting, resolves, call taking, how to, etc. During a week of training for remote user support, I was with someone who taught me a golden rule. Never trust your client slash caller, ever. This has always been on my mind to make sure I always understand the full story and asking correct questions before diving in. But sometimes I give in and trust the caller to shave a few minutes off a call or sometimes simply because it makes sense to. Never again. Normal day, normal calls. One call comes in. It was transferred from one of my colleagues who was training someone. Lady tells me the following even before being introduced after being transferred. Lady. I can't type at all and it's not working. My system is frozen and my monitor is not responding. Me to myself. Here we go. What the heck is she even talking about? Me. Hi ma'am. I'll be taking over this call moving forward. What exactly do you mean you can't type? Lady. It's just not working. I type and it's not working. The previous guy told me to unplug my monitor and reboot, test it, didn't work. Plug the monitor back in and it's still just not working. Me to myself. What the heck kind of troubleshooting is that? What wasn't I told from the previous agent? Oh my gosh, this is going to be a long one. Me. Can you click on the... Lady. No, I can't even click. First of all, she was using a laptop that was connected to their monitor. Normal stuff. It just couldn't do anything. We unplugged the monitor and had them use the laptop as normal. I told them to just log into the system with the laptop keyboard and mouse. It worked. We got in, got them connected, and I remoted on to see what the heck they were doing with this monitor shenanigans. Immediately, I get a key test running. They test out their external keyboard and no keys are registering. Device manager showed no external mouse or keyboard connected. Nothing in Windows settings or devices either. 
we plugged the monitor back in to see what all the monitor shenanigans was about because she was telling me how it had something to do with the monitor because of the last agent that was helping them. I find out that they had their keyboard and mouse connected to the actual monitor running as kind of like a docking station. Magically, the keyboard and mouse show up in Windows settings and devices as a combo. One USB for both devices. Shenanigans, if you ask me. This guy really likes the word shenanigans. Key test again. Keyboard doesn't work. Mouse is working now? Had them unplug the USB from their monitor, which took a while because they couldn't find it, and had them plug in directly to their laptop. Mouse worked, but not the keyboard. What the heck? I decided, well, maybe it's something with the drivers, or the keyboard is dead? Me. Does the keyboard usually emit any light at all? Lady. Nope. Me. By chance, does your keyboard run off of batteries? Lady. Yeah, it has batteries, but changing them didn't fix it. Me. Is everything incorrectly? Lady. Yes. Me. Could we swap out the batteries again, maybe? Maybe we got one with no juice left in it. A few minutes go by. Lady. It's still not working. Only the mouse works. Okay, I guess I can't get much more information from that. I have to kind of trust them on this one. I won't even bother asking them for the model, because they really sound like they wouldn't know. I was really over the day and wanted to get this call over with, fix it, and move on. I start looking at drivers, uninstall, reboot, reinstall, same issue. Took a further look to see if for whatever reason the keyboard had internal storage. Maybe for whatever reason it was being blocked by our system policies. Whatever. We're pretty deep into this call, given it takes a lot of time for them to reboot, test things, the occasional be right back, or hold on real quick, and even the no I don't know, that makes our lives a bit harder. What could it even be? I was honestly just about to tell them they were SOL here. Let's get you a new keyboard. Lady was fiddling around for a while in the middle of looking at everything and me being completely stumped and about to send them documents for a keyboard replacement. Lady. Oh, you know what? The nub of the battery is supposed to be on the spring, right? <laughs> the nub, by the way. Me. No, definitely not. It's supposed to be the other way around. Facepalm. Keyboard now works like a charm. Sometimes we overlook the simple things because we put too much trust into our client. The golden rule. Never trust your client. Ever. Too long didn't read. Caller had their monitor acting as a docking station for their laptop, which did not work for their keyboard. Their keyboard batteries ran wrong. Positive and negative were on the wrong ends. Okay, I gotta say I'm guilty of this one. I've done it. I, I don't use a wireless keyboard. Um, I don't know why. I just don't. It's just one extra piece of equipment. But I do use a wireless mouse and. Uh, there have been times when I've been guilty of putting the battery in wrong. I don't know why or how. It's a stupid thing. I've been using batteries for almost 50 years and I still can't get it right all the time. Most of the time I do. I'm not that off. And for our next story, the mute button is your friend. Not long after Y2K. Holy cow, that was a long time ago. <laughs> Not long after Y2K, I was working for a credit card company supporting their payment processing center. The whole company was huge, multiple thousands of employees, but our little branch was a modest hundred or so, and was located across the country from the main branches, which were in San Francisco if I recall correctly. Payment processing was conceptually simple, if technically complex. Customers send in checks. <laughs> checks. Customers send in checks. 30 or 40 people open envelopes and scan checks. Another 20 people read the scans and verify amounts. And I mostly sit around waiting for my favorite users to call. It was the weekend. I'd started my shift with the usual calls. Lead operator fat fingered her password again. Somebody managed to get an envelope into the check scanner and was afraid to open the machine to clear the jam. Things like that. And was settling down to start rotating tapes in the backup queue. When the phone rang, the lead operator reported, nothing is working. I knew her, nice lady, smart, about as technical as a Labrador Retriever. So I headed over to see what she meant. 
I hurried because she'd sounded fairly alarmed. When I reached the center, everybody was standing around talking. They looked at me like I was a movie star or something. I mean, they all stopped talking and stared, with hope and joy on their faces. It was eerie. Lee showed me her computer, which was supposed to be tracking progress on the company WAN, wireless access network. It was connected to the LAN, but the WAN was down. I jogged back to the server room, phoning my boss to warn him. He was in his car by the time I'd reached the server room, where the WAN showed no problems. I called the NOC group in San Francisco. They eventually answered, listened to my report, and told me, yeah, hang on, Andrew's in charge of that. Sound of somebody tapping his phone but not quite pressing the mute button. Andrew's voice came on in the background of the call. Vox Popsicle? He's an arrogant bee. I don't want to talk to him. <laughs> I replied, look, you don't have to like me, but I have 50 people making 10 bucks an hour not working due to the WAN. Immediate sound effect of the mute button actually being pressed this time. They had us reconnected in about 40 minutes. I told my boss about it. I thought it was funny. What a faceless knock guy thought about me doesn't bother me. My boss was less amused. I never heard what happened to Andrew, but my boss was a former military drill sergeant and could tear strips off of you without raising his voice or swearing. I did, however, learn what caused the outage. Andrew came in on the weekend, looked around the San Francisco office and saw no workers. So he decided to take down the servers that took our data. The network was still up, so our WAM was technically still working, but the destination servers were offline. He figured that since the big office was empty, nobody would be using the servers. Brilliant. Yeah, if you're going to talk smack, you better make darn sure you press the mute button. And if somebody else took the call for you, don't ever trust that they put you on hold or mute. Hey guys, thanks for sticking with me to the end today. If you enjoyed this content, do me a favor. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, click that bell notification icon so you don't miss the fat guy with the beard telling you stories. By the way, if you scroll down into the description box, we have a link to our new merch store where you can get Uncle Reddit t-shirts. It isn't much, but any support is definitely appreciated. See ya!